Welcome to Ghosh Company once again. I would like to welcome our guest today, Ipshita Ganguly. Uh, she is a poet. This is one of her major recognitions, and I'm going to elaborate a bit about Ipshita. Uh, we planned this discussion almost about a year ago. For various reasons, it didn't happen, and I'm looking forward to this uh, conversation very delightfully, where uh, we will talk about Ipshita's recently published. book of poems anthology of poems rooted but before going over there there is a non poetic side of ipshita and i would love to uh, spend some time on that to introduce her and i should tell you that while i was going over the introduction i had a lot of fun because of its versatility so welcome to ghosh company ipshita hope you are doing very very well thank you so much abhishek we have been talking about this whole program for such a long time not this one in particular but we've been talking about doing something together Absolutely. Uh, you know and that has finally taken shape and i guess everything is meant to be when it is meant to be so right before the pujas and good time good time to catch up over adda very good time to catch up on adda before the pujas and when you have created the mood saying before the pujas i think i will touch upon that element a lot to introduce ipshita it's it's a you know it's it's a very difficult task to introduce a person who is so versatile it's like which side should i pick up but i have tried to do some research on you some detective work on you and let's see if i if, if it's right or uh, whatever i could accumulate i would like to say for some of the things which i personally very well very much loved and connected with it so uh, ipshita is a poet travel and heritage enthusiast and a consultant she has a website called ipshitaganguly.com and uh, you can explore her uh, artistic work her poems uh, over there and uh, i should say that i will put a link of a website on our description box where you can access that she hails from calcutta which is also my hometown uh, as she sh- i picked up some very nice words and phrases from her website she is a passionate calcuttan and a quintessential indian and we will we, you will see this as we go forward very nicely she has said something she is a student of life she likes to learn for ipshita learning doesn't stop it doesn't end little bit of her educational background she is a student of uh, modern high school for girls and then she graduated from presidency college uh, which is now a university with political science honors she moved on further and did her post graduation in international relations from jadavpur university and then she moved on to her career which spanned over two decades it started with logistics and then moved to luxury hotels she has served many groups including marriott group of hotels and she has held many executive senior corporate positions coming back to the poetic side she has debuted her solo compilation of poems uh, with uh, of love longing and random pondering and correct me if i'm wrong this came out in 2017 Uh, and it was actually uh, inaugurated in the kolkata book f- uh, book fair which i i read about it further on she has also she is also been one of the leading actresses in a unique poetry film it's called kolkata cocktail some of you can actually watch it on youtube uh, i have done uh, that way it has been showcased in many festival it features some of the poetry that ipshita has uh, created she has written Ipshita is also involved in many, many, many poetry forums, and there are some we share. So I would like to mention some of some of them, such as uh, motivational strips, the Significant League. She has been associated with many poetry journals. She has led a very popular Facebook talk show. It's called Cafe Conversation. I used to enjoy it a lot, especially on the weekends. Coming back. to some of the awards and honors i would like to mention that uh, ipshita has been awarded she actually received the gujarat uh, sahitya academy award in 2020 and this year in 2021 she has been awarded the order of shakespeare medal which is really an honor and she has been recognized by many bodies many poetic bodies but i would like to mention that she has been recognized as a world contemporary poet by the poetry and world vision group from bangladesh today in this discussion we will mostly focus on her newest published compilation of poems her second anthology of poems which is known as rooted india 75 and we the people i will actually put a link uh, of rooted in the description box so that you can just click on it 
go and you must have this book because if you feel rooted to your own culture, this book will create magic in your life. This is something I can tell. I have read this book. I have, I kept it aside. I read it again. I worked. I got stressed, went back again, read it many, many, many times. So, uh, all about rooted today. So, how do you feel, Ipshita, about rooted? Tell a bit about the book for our audience. The book happened very, very spontaneously. But before I do that, Abhishek, I want to thank you for your kind words. That was a very warm and elaborate introduction. Thank you so and much. And I'm very grateful. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Um, and yes, you've done considerable research. <laughs> I was wondering. Yes, it <laughs> was hard, but it. <laughs> thank you so much. So, um, coming back to my book, Baby, because all the books that we always publish are babies in their own right. So. Right. This one's very special. I mean, this is the second compilation. As you guys like said, my first uh, happened in 2017. That's right. Uh, this one, you know, I've been getting nudged and pushed by a lot of lot of uh, senior poets, uh, people I consider like my mentor, saying that when are you going to take out your second book? And the publisher had just like you know, they pursued me for a while, and they're like, "Hello, what is happening?" But as you very rightly said, I have I have a very full fledged professional life, and I'm some, a couple of other interest areas, and although I love writing poetry, uh, the very act of you know, compiling, manuscripting, it's still um, it's still going on. In fact, uh, even for rooted, uh, there's a lot more to be done in terms of the printed copy, etc. So uh, it's a very elaborate process. So that bit is what scares me because I just didn't have the time. So the second book is you know, it's time, it's coming. But uh, and I didn't really plan it. I mean, there was. There's a lot of poems which I thought, okay, I, I need to kind of get around to taking my book, books out. But uh, then what I think happened was we, uh, you, I, everybody, the world has been going through a very intense period of time. Right? That's right. Uh, COVID and pandemic were very life and death situations, still are. Uh, and it was very intense. And along with that, uh, along with that, there's a lot happening, in, I think, in every country. Right? So in, yeah. in the US, for example, uh, we had the Trump Biden, uh, you know, now of course Taliban happened. Uh, in India, we had, we have, we, we continuously have elections, you know that. So uh, there's election times, and even in India, there has been uh, a lot of very intense uh, conversation about where India is headed. And you, I'm sure we shape you as well as the rest of the Indian diaspora are very aware of that, right? The things are, when we were growing up, I think it was one kind of, we have taken one kind of India for granted, which is wrong, because India cannot be one kind. It's, it's a conglomeration of cultures, sports, beliefs, faith, everything. Um, and, and that is coming to the forefront now. Uh, and it's very interesting. Time. It's very interesting time world over, but it's also very, it, it is uh, a very interesting time for India as well, because identities are getting they were always there. There was constitutional debates, etc. Right. But um, it's just come down to everyone right now, right? So, and because I think because of social media and WhatsApp and everything, everybody has an opinion, or maybe doesn't have an opinion. Uh, so it's interesting time. So uh, combined with the whole intensity of pandemic situation, uh, the first wave, particularly the second wave in India. And the uh, you know the election times and, and just recently what happened there was a lot of nostalgia for me so it was a it was an exploration of my own connect which is why it's rooted right um, so you've read the book there are two very distinct things one is the talk about India and when I talk about India I think it's about the value system right right so that and the other is the connectedness to the soil. So I think these are two overriding themes in my book, and that that was that's always there. That's in me. That's in you. That's in every Indian. Every Indian. Uh, I mean, every person who's born in India was connected to India. But I just think it it just it had to come out, so it did, <laughs> and it took the shape of this book. And I think it's uh, it's very well said, and that leads me to the next next question. Before that, I'll just share a, a very small anecdote with you, and it is very interesting, pertinent to the book. And what is interesting is I took some aspects of Rooted, and I was meeting few friends in the Canadian, in the Montreal poetry circle, uh, and I was discussing some poems with them. One person actually told me it's a book uh, filled with a sense of patriotism towards India. 
That's one aspect. A segment of people actually said, this is a poem very much rooted. It talks about someone's love for their lineage. We always have the reflection of our roots. The tendency of our mind is to compare it. And fortunately, I'm in a city of Montreal, which I can tell you if you ever visit Montreal, which is very different from other cities in Canada. It resembles Kolkata so much. We have a Bhavanipur here. We have a North Calcutta here. We have... A uh, we have uh, Bobaja Street here. Of course, the names are different, but culturally, in terms of the looks, in terms of the humid weather that we get, like Hemo Gorum, that kind of a weather, Montreal, <laughs> Montreal has everything. It has a river. So we get pretty much everything that Kolkata gets and also the cultural mindset of people, not just work, 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 but they are so much into poetry, films, theater, local theaters, like we grew up with all the local theaters in Calcutta. Uh, all the yes. Mukto Moncho that we know, the open theatre concept. Montreal pretty much has everything and people also think in that way. So I think Rooted has both the personal elements and the patriotic elements. Your closeness with your roots and your tremendous closeness, love, affection, nostalgia with your maternal grandparents. And they keep yeah. coming back. Tell a bit about your grandparents and how that actually converges into Rooted. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Uh, one is, you know, when you were so beautifully comparing Montreal, uh, parts of Montreal with Kolkata, uh, you're so right. In so many ways, the world is one world, right? And Vasudeva uh, Kutumbakam. That is that is that is the easiest kind of saying is very Indian, but then it's so true. The world is coming together as one one greater humanity, and uh, that is also so so rooted in Tagore, right? Yeah. This whole concept of one world you know, um, is, is a, it's a very beautiful concept. And of course, we have national borders and of course, they create pluralism, but then there is a greater sense, uh, sensibility uh, as well. Uh, and yes, my book is dedicated to my Dada Mashai, uh, Maharaj Kumar Shori Shandarai. Uh, it is definitely dedicated to him. And although uh, I refer to him, and I used to call him Dada, Hmm. So the Moshai went away. Both my Didima and Dada Moshai, as you technically call our maternal grandparents in Bengali, but right. they, I think, insisted. Uh, and I don't know because I've always grown up calling them Dada and Didi. So hmm. only Dada and Didi. Which is why one of my poems is to Dada Didi. So that's the way it is. Uh, Dada and Didi were extremely important in my life. And the reason this book is dedicated to Dada, or my maternal grandfather, is because he lived through independence. Uh, he lived through independence. He was, a, he was in his early 20s when independence happened. And, uh, and then I saw him till I was 24. So he died in yeah, for, for a long part of, of uh, my life, I got him. And, uh, there was a, so here was this one person who actually saw independence coming in and lived through independence and then the aftermath of independence. Uh, that's why it was, this is a tribute to India. Right. And here, uh, I thought the connect is so, so apparent and so strong uh, that I, 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 this is a tribute to India through a dedication to my grandfather. And uh, there are so many elements of India uh, that has been shaped by him. Uh, for example, the term Swadeshi, right? uh, such an important concept in our freedom. Uh, I saw my, my grandfather, of course, was from the Gandhi Valley back then. He was Maharaj Kumar Kodi Kandaraya, Nubira. Right. So uh, he from that. Such a bad lineage, and mother told us the daughter. But all I've never seen him wear anything but coffee, hadi, haddur. Haddur refines hadi. Okay. And uh, harer bukam. Okay. He would wear harer bukam. He would not wear shona or or kure or money money. Okay. Uh, because I think that was something that they had given us, their generation had given us to the nation. And all his life he did that. So it wasn't, nobody told him or did anything. But this, this, the loveliest part of, uh, of my revisiting that era was because 
I was revisiting values that we grew up with. And the values that we grew up with was simplicity and a sense of nation building, which percolated to everyday life. You see, people, there were, there were our grandparents, amongst us, I mean, there were many of us, his grandparents of the war. Right? Uh, on, on Independence Day this year, right. I spoke about who, who, I think you were there part of the program, I spoke about my friend's grandmother right. who fought as part of INA, if I mean, with, along with the and my own grandfather, who uh, gave up so much because the land went, the Jamindari went, the title went. So it's not just a question of title and money, it's a question of an entire identity. I just understand that. Of course, there's a lot of money that goes with it, everything else. But it's more than that, it is your identity that you give up the altar of a new nation. And my grandfather did, and, I'm, and there were many others I'm sure like him who did. But it takes a lot because it's, you know, if we read the textbooks, we don't see more. But when we live in with those people day in, day out, uh, to rebuild, to rethink, to re identify yourself is a, is a very, very challenging thing. And it's just think all of us have identities we've grown right. into, we've built up, we've also been born into, right? So that whole shift. Of something that you're you've always been used to a particular way of life, and you just give it up, but you give it up to the altar of the new nation, and you give it up with so much purity and so much dedication. Um, I think that is something that that is what I really want, wanted to bring forth in my book. Right. That hey, these guys are not people that you just read in the textbooks, okay? These are not Chandrasekhar Azad and Bhagat Singh and Lukman. And then had to fill up um, and Ambedkar and so on so forth. Um, not just most, but we are everyday grandparents. So it's yes. not so long ago. 75 years is not so long ago. It's just just as old as our grandparents. Right. You know, I'm That's sure, true. I mean, yeah, we can actually feel them, right? If we actually close our eyes and memories. I, I know I remember the smell of the sky, right? Both my grandparents. I mean, and I, 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 I'm speaking on behalf of so many of us. Absolutely. 75 so, years is not that far away. Yeah. It's just, it's as just as old as our grandparents. Right. These guys fought for the freedom of our country. And if you, you know, I went to Selina Jane and Andaman, I, oh, I think that's a temple to the altar of the nation that every Indian needs to go and run through a pranam or a matha people. Right. Um, yeah. So, that's when you think that, hey, these guys were our grandparents, as recent as that. And uh, that's when you think that, okay, so they got us independence, they sacrificed so much for independence. Then what do we have to do? Isn't there a role that we need to play? And, you know, believe you me, Abhishek, this is not about your political ideology or which party you vote for. That is so material. Right. But this is about feeling responsible. This book is about feeling responsible for your country. Especially something as new and as nascent, nascent as a nation in the making. Because yes, India is still in the making. So what were their values? What built those values? What do we take on from there? What do we want to carry on? Because just like they gave us something, we have to also make something of what is India and give it to our next generation. That's actually how the book unfolded. It's a dynamic process. It's, it shouldn't stop. It's not like my responsibility and it, it ends with my, you know, my physical existence. It should be transferred and whoever is getting it should carry it forward. It's like a relay race. That's what you are saying and that's what we should somewhere like, doesn't matter if it's, if a person from India, if there is a sense of roots, there should be a sense of dynamic responsibility. Uh, rather than, you know, not about political ideology. I think something you, I, I think I kind of understand from where you are coming. And that's a very, uh, uh, I would say, honest justification of uh, po like politics or political ideology is not, it doesn't define the entire sense of responsibility towards the country. It is just one aspect. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you touched upon something. And again, I won't go into the details, but what I felt when you actually shared some experience with your grandparents, uh, 
the first thing that comes to my mind is after reading a little bit about them, I found that they are so normal grandparents. They are the same grandparents yes. that resonates with my grandparents. Of course, they were not zamindars, but you know that sense of normalcy is something praiseworthy. When I was reading it, I was I went back to my childhood, the days um, in early eighties when I used to spend time with my grandparents, the little affections. So that's the kind of feel I got from your upbringing, and not only that. This support was also came. This support also came from your own parents, which you have very nicely mentioned and acknowledged in the book. So there was no separation or breaking point in your life. That's what I understand. You have also summed up the unification of uh, man and woman, and that is a very important point in today's world. Despite so much technological ad advancement in the Western countries, in terms of how we see women and how we respect them, we need a lot of technological advancement in that regard. It's we, we have progressed so much in terms of the computers, but not in terms of how we look at women. Woman needs to respect women. Man definitely needs to. Uh, so I think you have summed up that thing too in few of your poems. Uh, so that's a very good message I would like to share with the with everyone who will actually read Rooted. That respect the main thing, not just man and woman. Respect everyone, and that is resonating in every poem. So if I have to ask you. Really, like, uh, what's your most favorite poem? Like, I think you have compiled 23 poems in the book. Uh, I think I counted it on the first day. One, two, three, yeah. four, 23. <laughs> out, out of those 23, which one do you like the most? And I know it's a hard very, choice. Very but difficult but... question. <laughs> very difficult question. I, I can't really, I mean, you know, 23 is not an awful poem. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a, it's not a thick book. Yeah. Um, there are actually out of the 23 poems, there is one, uh, there are two poems which are prose poems. So they are, yeah, we call them poems because they are prose borderline. Uh, but the other ones are quite brief. Some of them are really brief, some of them are after brief. But they are 23 thought streams. Mm. They are actually 23 thought streams. And as you very rightly said, and thank you for saying it so beautifully, not so much about convenience, that really wasn't my thought. It was more a question of the values which I received from my grandparents and my parents. Um, and those values uh, are what I was thinking about. And what is not just the values that you receive, because that very, that's there, right? But how contemporary is it? And how have I lived it with those? Right. And how do I continue to live it with those? And how would I like to continue? Or how would the next generation take it? So it's really a continuity of what we received and what we need of it and what is being carried on. Uh, so there are 26 strings. Now, if you actually, to answer it very simplistically, there is the first prose poem is called Rooted. And my book is based on, I mean, my book is called Rooted India 75 and We the People. That's yes. the whole name of the book. Yes. So it's very significant because we Indians, and when I say Indians, I mean people of Indian origin, people who love India, people who are not Indian, either in origin or yeah. by nationality, but people who are who just like our spirituality or yoga or they've come and visited Jaipur and fallen in love with it. It's anybody who has a sense of feeling uh, for India. And of course, the diaspora and us, those of us in India. So um, that is the, the sense of rooting. I think I have to keep reiterating the fact that this is not, this is really about your sense of rooting and your sense of responsibility towards your country. That's it. Nothing else. It's of course, therefore, rooted is a very important part. So. Absolutely. And India 75, because it's a tribute to India on her 75th, as she steps into her 75th year. Most importantly, we the people, because this is really about what we want to make of freedom, what right. we want to make of India. Because we have a responsibility to do something for the country. So, um, so that, of course, rooted is, is probably the most rooted part of this whole book because the book is named after that. Um, at a very personal level, of course, for Dada Didi, uh, if I look at these two, it's, uh, these two are a very significant part of the personal aspect of, of you know, of this. You know. But then, um, I think the first poem that I chose, The Nation That You Are or Have Become, Right. Which, which is 
it's goes back to the time before independence, right? If you see the illustration of the uh, India before independence, right. the that you are a half Um and then the last poem, which is a prayer. So everything is very significant. Then if you take your daily Durga, you talked about the you know the, the women's emancipation part of it. Um, so many. I think everyone's poem is special. I can't pick a favorite. You know, I have given you a difficult question deliberately, like just to see how you think. I can tell you that I went through a lot of difficult moments in my life when I just got to know about you. At that time, I went through various difficult moments of my life. I, with, like, an, like a fool, I actually got into a severe sense of depression without knowing that I went to a depression. So, you, your poems were one of those which actually helped me to come out, which I never said any, to anyone. Very interestingly, you start with a question. It doesn't matter to whom you are asking that question and try to provide the answers in your poem. Like I will take one example where you are actually posing a question to Mahatma Gandhi, Bapu, and you are comparing and asking Bapu that the India that we are in today how would you how would mahatma gandhi have appreciated that india good bad ugly so that that's the style i have liked it and there are many other points where i have followed that style that is something beautiful you give the answer already so if someone says i didn't get a direction from ipshita's poems that's wrong she she has provided the answers do you have something in mind what's what what next do you have your next book coming in in 5 years and after or something in like 5 months <laughs> <laughs> i hope i hope it won't take 5 years i have no clue but yeah, I would like to definitely take it out sooner than than the um, gap between uh, these two books. Uh, yes. Let's see, let's see. But please do. Um, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. I mean, you just put it very beautiful. I call India a beautiful chaos um, because I, I really think it's a, it's a beautiful chaos, and there is madness in that chaos, and there's order in that chaos. Uh, you just have to find your way out in the chaos. It is it's beautiful. Uh, but also, Abhishek, the way you you know, you mentioned uh, about my poetry style or about the respect that it's always such a pleasure to, re- to talk to somebody who's a genuine reader. Um, this is, I think, the biggest lesson of, of, of writing because, you know, you write, you write your story, but how it resonates with the reader is the reader's story. And I've always said this, and I will always say this, that a piece of whether it's art or poetry or basically anything which is creative is not just the creators, it's not the poetry, it's not the poetry, it's also the reader. Because Absolutely. I may be writing with a strain of thought, it may speak to you with a completely different thought. And uh, thank you for putting it at work for me, so we really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you Shita. And I would, I would also say something that, you know, I was a kind of person who would, who would never read a poem. You know, I, I used to read fiction, I was not a poetry person. What change, I really don't know, but I owe a lot to uh, Shamosri because uh, she is one of the person who started forcing me reading poems. And, you know, in that term, she is a very strict teacher. Like, she will start with very difficult poems. She will never give me a simple verse. <laughs> and in English, in Bengali particularly, she's like, you have to read it, understand and let me know. And, you know, this became a dinner, t- like, you know, a d- like a dinner table conversation. Reading poems became an addiction. You know, not all addictions are bad. So I think your poems also fits that thing. Your poems is your poems are very informative too. I have listened to some of your interviews on Rooted, and I I want the Ghosh Company viewers to actually uh, appreciate this part that you have uh, talked about a serial killer, Jack the Ripper, and there is a poem here called Ripper. Ripper. Tell a bit about that inspiration because that's suddenly an offshoot poem. So tell a bit about how you got inspired from that character and what are you trying to bring in? There was a news article which came out some time ago about uh, somebody telling a lady, you know, this, I think this somebody, somebody was important. She was flying in an aircraft and there was a lady with ripped jeans and she had children. So there was, and there was a news article about it, I remember. Okay. Uh, so um, I, it was kind of looked down upon as to why a lady who's married and who's got children is wearing the team. Uh, so the whole poem, Ripper, came from that uh, concept of a gentleman thinking and, and openly publicly saying that she's of a certain age, why is she wearing this jeans? And uh, 
that's how that whole reading came about. So um, it's like you know uh, why you, the, the whole I think the whole message. Although I hate to give a message, I, like I just said, that it's up to the reader to get his or her message. Right. But my thought while writing that that particular poem was, uh, you're bothered about these genes when so much else is getting ripped. Yeah? And uh, you know, if you're talking in terms of uh, why are you bothered about these genes, because oh, it's ripped, so it's showing skin. Then any of us who've grown up uh, in India, or I'm pretty sure pretty much in many, many parts of the world, that it's not the skin showing, it's the mental attitude that is the matter. And I think that is the point I try to. That was the thought that came to me, and that is the uh, that is how it came. Should I read the ripper uh, to kind of, yeah? I think uh, you should read something, otherwise, uh, you know, I'm going to get a lot of dislikes, and personally, I will put a dislike. <laughs> Because if you are not reading it today, that's not incomplete justice. Let me read the report because it's a very nice, um, you know, the way Absolutely. you mentioned it. Yeah. Where did Jack the Ripper come from in yeah. India? Yeah. So here it is. It's called Ripper. You remember Jack the Ripper? Who went about killing women, protest murders of poor souls. He ripped too. And someone here and there rips a pair of jeans. Their sense of aesthetic, not mine. But then I ask you, what's in a rip anyway? So long as it does not kill or harm. And you say, it harms. It harms propriety and shame and aesthetics. It teaches wrong morality and wrong culture. Ask any woman who grew into an adult. The women who only wore saris and salwar suits even were guys. How many times she was being felled and groped? How many times the lecherous men in her belch? Just how many times she felt her soul being ripped? And when the elders looked away from her horror story, how many times she felt her heart was being shredded? And when she was told, this is normal, how she felt her confidence being minced. Each of those letters men were rippers. A chapter ripper who stripped her in his mind, pieced her into pieces and threw her away. So before your talk is epic, teach those men not to rip, will you? Just speechless. I think we should have. <laughs> A moment of silence to appreciate the words and the kind of intonation you have brought into like the choice of words in the poem is really beautiful and people who if if someone is even more curious to know about Jack the Ripper I'll just tell them that you know Jack the Ripper was a very famous uh, he's famous actually infamous would be the right word uh, he's a serial yeah. killer who used to kill particularly target women uh, particularly who were in the lesser part of the society at that time in England. Uh, they, a lot of the, them were prostitutes and, you know, he will target them for no reason. And I think I haven't seen much work like someone actually taking an inspiration from Jack the Ripper and putting it in an Indian context. I think I, I couldn't find anyone but our own Ipshita Ganguly. So I think, I think that's phenomenal. And the title that you have chosen is uh, very apt, I would say. And you have done justice by narrating it. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, we are kind of coming to the end of this journey. It doesn't feel like ending. I'll be very honest with you. Let it continue, you know, uh, which means we should do another session in the future when the next book I comes out. I love that. So, but uh, may I, before we end, ask you a few things? I really would like to ask you a few questions. Tell me. Uh, that's done. And I have to remind my friends, this is the first time and I'll tell them that when, when I first approached Ipshita that if she comes here and gives us her time, uh, she was the one who actually asked me if she's allowed to ask me. I never got that question from from any of her guests. And I'm absolutely open to that. You can ask questions. Definitely, yes. But it's a two-way interview, as you can see. Of course. So this is a chat. This is an adda. <laughs> it's an adda, Bengali, as we say in Bengali. Yes. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, because I know there is this, you, know, you, you sit in Montreal in Canada. 
Caro Novi Shatshu Mudre Pade, across the other end of the world. It's night here, it's morning there. And uh, you, you run Ghoshka again, which is such a quintessential Bengali Indian name. Thank you. Uh, so and you, you totally take cultural aspects of Bengal and India and you highlight it. And it's a beautiful quote. Um, and you love Rooted, I know you did, because you gave me such a wonderful review. So that. I want to ask you, what is your idea of India? You know, so far away, you're sitting so far away. And I know you're quintessentially, your heart belongs there. But what is your idea? And I, 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 I may I request you to speak for many of you who are that side. What is your idea of India now? Because that's very important. 75 years of India, we the people, and you're very much part of we the people. Uh, thank you for saying those words. Uh, my perception of India also changed over time, very unexpectedly in my life. For some reason, I had this inner feeling that I have to do my higher studies in the West. I never had a choice of any country and explore. And that has happened. But what was actually seeping in, which we didn't realize at that time, was the rooted part was very obvious at the back of my head. With the current standing in my life, the way I see India is more of a holistic spiritual entity that helps me in my current life and the way things are going in my life. And I jokingly tell my Bengali friends, uh, I have to go to India, you know, it's my second wife. So I see India as, I mean, not to discount the first wife, but it stays in parallel, literally, like in culture, as I said, in emotions, when I walk on the streets, there is an India resonating within me. The oxygen that's flowing within me, whatever memories have, uh, I have of my parents, uh, my parents are not there, my grandparents, everything, like they were all in India. So I have to go back to my roots. I have to think about roots. India. I, I, I cannot, roots. cannot, I cannot roots. take India apart. If I have to take India apart, then I have to say, you know, my life starts from 2008, the year when I came to Canada. My life doesn't start from 2008. The whole chunk is residing else. So India is everywhere for me. It's in my heart. Lovely. Yeah. And that's so true because the Indian civilization is way older than Indian nation. And that's like another thing that I kept mentioning in this book that there is the nation that is India, which is just turned 75. And there are people actually asking, what do you say? India is 75 years old. I said, yes, India is 75 years old. Because the nation that is India is 75 years old. The Indian civilization is Chanathan. It's Absolutely. millions of, I mean, it's, it's very, very old. Yep. But that is, that is, there's a difference between a nation and a civilization. So, uh, the flag that we own, the Chiranga, the Tricolor, right. that's 75 years old. And let's not even discount the fact how far we've come in these 75 years, because what was India? India was a whole conglomeration of feudal, you know, feudal land, Zamindari or princely state. There was no concept right. of a nation. Look at us today, 75 years, we are a nation. And I think that's one of the most beautiful achievements. Absolutely. We have achieved quite a lot in this 75 years, and but there are still a lot to achieve down the road, of for course. sure. For of sure. Course. We are new. We, we, there's millions of miles, and what are we going to do about it? That's the that's question. Right. So I'm going to request you to read one of your favorite poems from this book. That's a, that's the most terrifying job you are asking me to do. My plan was to ask you to narrate a poem and finish this. There are many favorites again. And it changes with my mood. With, you know, with the diurnal cycle in the morning and evening, like the ragas, your poem also shifts. In saying that, I would like to uh, read one of the poems that you wrote. And it's also in, in the Bengali and many, many Indian cultures. Uh, many cultural people will celebrate Navratri. They will celebrate Durga Puja and Diwali. So I think this poem will set the mood uh, for them too. So I'm going to read it. And while I'm going to read it uh, happily, as asked from the asked by the poet herself, I would like to show you that, you know, this is like a, so this is my iPad and I have rooted in here. So if people want to buy a Kindle edition of this book, uh, if they want to uh, go paperless, they can also do it. And I really like, this is my iPad cover. This is a really colorful one. I had a very dull looking gray cover for like six years or so. So I changed it and got this one. So let me figure out. The poem which I loved the most is Your Daily Durga. So I'm going to read that. Uh, it's dedicated to the goddess, uh, the mother goddess Durga. So I'm going to read that. I ask, what do you do with your daily Durga? 
the one that birthed you, the one that birthed your child, the one that you helped birth. Tell me, do you invoke her in splendorous faith, the way you invoke the goddess? When your daily Durga comes home, post her daily dose of dreary chores to you. Ask her to put up her calloused feet and pamper her with some hot tea. Reciprocate the way she would greet you when you come home. When your daughter Durga comes to you, hassled by your predator's self-inflicted patriarchal right of harassing her, do you tell her to be Chamunda and Chandi and Rakta Dantika? For that is being Durga too, not just Lakshmi, not just Kamala. Oh no. For Durga is she, the Bhuvaneshwari, the Brahmacharini, the Kalaratri, all of this and more is she, your daily Durga. In every woman, for you to cherish, for you to invoke, for you to worship daily. Thank you, Beth. Beautifully, you Beautiful words. Do you see the style that I was talking about? You asked, started with a question, and then you provided the answer. It's so easy, you know. Wow. <laughs> Anything else you would like to share? I, For... think I would really like to end with my last poem, if I may. It's a very brief poem, but that is something which is uh, which is the core and, and of this particular book. Absolutely. Uh, Please do. This one's a prayer. How beautiful is it when colors stand together and yet distinct? Soft violet, the deep blue, the bright red. How it lights up the sky and yet each color holds its own. I can the beauty and may this nation forever stand together, heads held high, hands held together, a grand rainbow of people celebrating their diversity, celebrating their distinctiveness, celebrating their uniqueness, yet stronger connection. Beautiful. Thank you so much again for joining us at Ghosh Company, for having such a lovely conversation. And this is the only platform where we never mind going over time when the conversation is so powerful and so encouraging. I hope our viewers will like it and we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Ipshita. It's a pleasure, pleasure having you. Stay well in peace. Thanks. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Thank you. It's been an honor for me to be part of uh, this particular event. And all the best to you and to Ghosh Company. And uh, yes, those people who would like to buy my book, it's available on Kindle. So very easy to just download it. Absolutely. Thank you. So, and thank you so much. Have a good one. Yes. So again, to the viewers, every links to buy Rooted is will be available in the description box. I'll put that in. You can buy that book. Enjoy. We have pretty much talked about everything from cultural roots to Ipshita's love for her grandparents to Mahatma Gandhi and we ended with a prayer. So with that, we would like to end this journey. Please put your like if you have liked this session. Definitely put your comments and if you have not sub subscribed to Ghosh Company, please do to remain uh, on track about our oncoming videos. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night from good India night. and have a good day to the people in the other part of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.